Hey guys, today I'm really excited to introduce to you my personal financial guru, Sunit Patel, and uh, he's going to share with us some uh, tips to get you ready for your home purchase and potentially a refinance in the event that you already own a home. Hi Sunit, how are you doing today? Hey, nice, Gloria. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. So just to give everybody a little bit of background, Sunit and I work together personally. Um, we met at the East Brunswick Chamber of Commerce and um, I asked him, you know, some questions and he actually was able to prepare a financial needs analysis for me and help me a lot in my personal life. So I definitely want to share what he has to offer with everybody. So uh, Sunit, why don't you tell us a little bit about exactly what you do and what areas you service? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, so I'm actually a certified public accountant. So I also do the accounting services as well as the tax services. Plus I also provide, a, I'm a financial broker and help the people to make sure that they retire with a good amount of the wealth. So I help them to prepare their financial plan as well as the retirement plan. Uh, any individual, we do Roth IRA, traditional IRA, as well as their kid education funds, right? Any small business owner like ourselves, we also do simple IRA, SAP IRA. Uh, for the businesses, a uh, little bit more advanced is the 401k plan, you know? And help to make sure that we all are planning to retire sooner with the better wealth and with a good amount of the money with us, you know? So that's my... Uh, talent, or you can say is my forte, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> Sounds good. And um, I understand that you have an office in Edison, New Jersey. Are there any other locations that you service? Uh, yeah, I serve actually all over the United States. Uh, I have licensed every state and we can provide any kind of the services, which is financial related and uh, save their serious amount of the money and help the client to get out of the debt. Wow, that's that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I do. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, um, I just wanted to kind of give everybody some ideas because I know the real estate market is really hot right now. A lot of people buying, selling and stuff. So um, one of the biggest issues that uh, plagues consumers right now is consumer debt. It's definitely a big issue when qualifying to purchase a home because the more debt you have, the less home you qualify to purchase. Um, what are some uh, debt reduction tips that you can share with some of our viewers to maybe help them qualify for, for more house? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, basically, think about it this way. Like when we have a more debt, right? Nobody's ready to give us a money. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> right? So if we go to borrow the more money, then it means they will charge us a higher rate of interest. And we're gonna end up to pay that high rate of interest for 15 years or 30 years when we buy any property. So the best way I'd recommend that please check your stuff, like how much debt you have. And you say, hey, I have a couple of credit cards. So just give you the example is pay off your debt, any debt you want to pay it off faster. Once you pay off one debt, add the same amount of the money which you are spending to pay off the first debt use that money to the second debt, right? So in the second debt, you are paying whatever the payment you had to pay for second, plus you're gonna add more money to pay off that debt, which will allow you to speed up the process to get out of the debt faster than you expect it to be, to get out of it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So how do you um, decide with people which debt is considered the first debt and which debt is second and, and all the subsequent? That's a good question, Claudia, uh, because we see it like a three different area, focus on the principal, how much money you have to pay, plus the interest rate, and how long that debt is scheduled to make a payment for it, right? So when we prepare the financial plan or financial need analysis, that will tell us that which debt is the sooner or which debt we can get rid of the sooner, and you can maximize the payment and use that money to pay off the second debt. So based upon uh, your financial plan, that's where we make a decision, which one would be the better bet to pay it off first, you know? Okay, gotcha. So it varies case by case. Case by case, yep. Okay, makes sense. So 
I don't know if you're aware, but the, the housing market is very competitive right now. There's a lot more buyers out there um, than there are homes for sale. So um, one thing that buyers can do to be more competitive in this market is to have more cash on hand. So what are some money saving tips that you can share today with our viewers? Oh, that's a great. So one basic uh, technique I use it for my own personal life is I, I love coffee. So think about it. Like Same here. Every day, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we go out and we like anybody we meet like, hey, let's buy the coffee or let's drink a coffee. Yeah, yeah. During the day, we buy three, four cups of the coffee at the, you know, the famous restaurant or famous uh, coffee place. It costs you uh, no, like 20 bucks a day or at least $15 a day. Think about sure. it. Yeah, $20 a day, five days of coffee is 100 bucks a week. And a month, you are talking about $400. So I changed a habit a little bit here. What I did is now I buy the coffee in the bulk or from the wholesale place, I buy grinded coffee, make coffee at home, you know, before I leave the house. And I carry like serious big coffee mug. So I have my coffee ready no matter where I go, you know. And I, I save serious amount of the money that way and which, can, which actually helped me to cut down my coffee expense almost two thirds of the expense. Wow, that's significant. It is a significant. And I did the same thing about the lunch. You know, lunch we buy it every day, cost you minimum is the 10 to $15 a day. True. Now, same thing, if you do it, plan it out properly and buy it one week worth of the lunch or the meat, right? Plan it out your lunch bag ready every morning. Just wake up half an hour early. You can save serious amount of the lunch expense also. Wow. Okay. So um, basically, in order to save money, it's really important to evaluate your daily habits and see where you can cut back and maybe make some changes uh, in order for longer term results. Absolutely. Makes sense. So um, another thing about this market right now is that interest rates are at an all time low and something that is challenging for people, whether they're looking to purchase a home or maybe refinance into a lower rate is that maybe they don't have great credit. So what are some cr uh, credit boosting tips you can share today? So as you know, it is like when you have more debt and you are unable to pay that debt on regular uh, monthly cycle. Mm -hmm. That's why it costs you credit score, right? So to cut down the debt, we, as we say in the previous tip, is just plan it out properly, cut down your expense on regular base, and make sure any of your debt you have it paid on regular uh, time. So it increase your credit score. But also when you cut down your debt faster, and you have enough money saved which helps you to pay off your debt, which will increase your credit score tremendously. And I know, you know that on a personal level, like how it boosts up the credit score, which allows you to refi your current mortgage or current debt at the lower rate. Yep, absolutely. Having bad credit is expensive. Um, and mine wasn't even that bad. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, uh, I bought my house with like around a 650 credit score and I got a 3.625 interest rate. About a year later, uh, I had paid off some debt using some techniques that Sunit shared with me. And uh, I was able to boost my score to above a 700 and get a two and a quarter interest rate. So it definitely saved me a couple hundred dollars a month. So thanks, Sunit. <laughs> now I can buy you more coffee. <laughs> No, I want you to use that money to pay off your mortgage faster, you know, pay off yeah. the principal. And I, I want you to be wealthy. You know, that's our goal to make sure every person I come across, I plan to help them out to get out of the debt faster and save serious amount of the money. So you can retire any day, anytime you want, because retirement is not the age. Retirement is how much money you have saved and how much money you have it. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about you because I truly feel that you have my back, you have my best interest at heart. You know, um, I don't know too many financial guys, but I know 
in general, most people are just looking out for themselves and they want themselves to retire very quickly. So they're just going to do whatever they got to do. And then it applies to real estate agents too, you know, agents who are just about their commission. Uh, right. But with your services, I truly feel like you're trying to help me to put myself in a better situation. And, um, you know, I, I definitely appreciate that. You're somebody I can trust. Uh, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to serve you best way. And I'll definitely, that's my goal. You know, any person I meet, uh, make sure that they are financially stable and financially free. That's awesome. So um, last question before I let you go is uh, as a homeowner, you know, it can be very lucrative to re refinance into a lower rate. Um, do you recommend that when people refinance, they, they pull uh, some equity out of their home? Uh, or what are some circumstances you would say, absolutely not, and some that you would say, yeah, that makes sense? Uh, I would say it's like if you want to refi to uh, reduce your interest rate, basically, or the mortgage payment, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, do it, do it. You know, as long as it saves you more money, free up your more money, which you can take care of or pay off the debt faster, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah, that, that makes sense. But if you want to refi to just borrow the more money, that doesn't make any sense. Think about it because to borrow the money, you're going to refi. It means you are increasing more debt. Yeah, that makes right? sense. So you are not owning the property in that situation. Your financial institute is owning your property. And if you are living in the primary resident, I would say is own the resident. Don't let the financial institute own your resident. Yeah, that makes sense. I know some investing gurus are uh, advocating for people to pull out equity from their home in order to buy a second uh, cash flowing asset. Is that something that you would say is a is a good scenario to uh, pull out equity, or is that something again you would say, hey, that's an increase in debt, don't do it? Yeah, it, it depends upon the person, but I won't recommend that because I have met few people who actually borrow more money on their primary resident to buy the investing property, right? When they did it, the market was so high, so they overspend the money to buy that rental property and once the market crashed they lost all that money and he's unable to maintain two property payment so he has to let the rental property go right to sell it out he didn't make them more money to pay that rental property off also think about it he borrow on his primary resident so now he owes more money on primary resident than originally ouch and that's the bad scenario happen. And I know that person individually. So I generally always recommend the people that minimize your debt, but also if you can generate the income where you can generate more income and have more cash, that would be the best bet. And I'll just give you the information that I also personally train and help the people. If any of the people are interested to make extra income in the financial industry, I generally can help them to get the financial licenses also. Okay, very cool. So um, just to kind of sum it up, if you're gonna refinance to just reduce your interest rate, sounds like Sunit saying that's a good idea. Right. <laughs> but yeah, if you're going to increase your debt in any way, um, he would more often than not uh, tell you, hey, that's a bad idea, but it's you know a case by case basis and, and a personal choice at the end of the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about how people can partner with you, whether it's as a, as a client uh, or as a business partner. Oh, so it's an easy way. They can contact me through the uh, Clannily. We can meet, right? We set up the appointment. We can do one-on-one -on -one Zoom or I can meet them in the person, whichever way they prefer. If it's uh, outside the, uh, like a New Jersey area, I can meet them on the Zoom. Uh, we can... Uh, share all the information uh, one on one now uh, i will ask you a question we can set up small interview you know and uh, once you uh, i will find out what do you expect from me right what's your expectation from me and what would you like to achieve in the life financial life basically so i can guide you and then i will definitely recommend you more solution than what you even think it's available 
you know, and then we can go from there. Very cool. So for those of you interested in connecting with Sunit, whether it's on Calendly, Zoom, phone, text, email, I'm going to put his contact information as well as the Calendly link uh, in the description box below. Uh, anything else you'd like to add, Sunit, before we uh, jump off? Uh, no, uh, I would love to serve more people. And definitely my goal is to make sure I help more family or major families to be financially free at that free. And if anybody wants to make extra income in the financial field and would like to be more professional license holder, I will definitely looking forward to contact you or you can contact me and we'll definitely be partnering. Very awesome mission. Well, thank you, Sunit, for your time today. I appreciate you sharing some tips and tricks to help people with their finances. And uh, hopefully we'll talk soon. Absolutely, Claudia. Thanks for allowing me to share more information and definitely looking forward to serve more people. Okay, thanks. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Bye. <laughs>